Hello everyone. I am Asira Rand. Uh, hello uh, for the Maker Fair attendees. I'm going to teach you how to make pepperoni pizza with a uh, Jetson Nano. Uh, this small device I have here. So let's get started. Okay, yeah. So this was me when I was young. Uh, this picture was like 30 years ago almost. And a lot of things has have happened uh, since the first picture to, to this uh, last picture. So some things I have done in between, I, I love to combine fun with technologies. So for example, one of my, my favorite games uh, was <clears throat> Mario Kart. So when, when virtual reality started to go to go to the market, I created a, a kind of virtual Mario Kart on my dining room. Uh, so I built this small cart and I was driving inside uh, the game. Um, also combining technology with, uh, with fun things can, can uh, bring you to, to do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So for example, I did uh, these uh, crazy videos with the F-18 uh, Air Force jets using a, a camera that Kodak lent me. So yeah, using technologies uh, in fun things usually can make you accomplish some, some dreams. Also doing some, uh, also working with Unity and, and TensorFlow, I did some kind of fun stuff doing some kind of training to teach these puppets to, to run uh, for uh, four hours. It took like four hours to, to learn. So this was one of my uh, first big uh, tests on, on AI. And also I, uh, before joining NVIDIA, I was working at IBM and uh, I also like to play with qubits and with real quantum computers. So one of the first things I, I wanted to do uh, was uh, doing the Schrodinger's cat experiment, but in this case with a human. So I managed to convince an influencer that is she's called uh, Schrodinger's cat. And we put her in a box and we did the real quantum uh, Schrodinger's cat experiment, but with a human. Instead of venom, of course, we had a kind of green substance that throws over her in, in case the qubit collapsed to one and it doesn't throw it, it collapsed to, to zero. Yeah, so curious stuff. So yes, basically I love making things with great graphics, science and AI. That is why I am at NVIDIA, which I think is the, the top company in these three things, uh, at least combined. I also uh, love to travel to developer events. And I remember a year ago, yeah, 2019, eh? what a year. <laughs> So we, I, I met uh, John Carmack with uh, the Spanish virtual reality community in the Oculus Connect. But probably you also miss other things from, from events. Probably you are tired of virtual events like this one uh, with no food, right? So me too. And I wanted to travel to Rome and, and be there with all you uh, guys and uh, girls. And I wanted, I wanted pepperoni pizza. So... What is the easiest, cheapest, and most intuitive device to make a pizza with AI? So this one, the Jetson Nano 2 gig. So this is the Jetson Nano 2 gig, And basically, this is the best way to learn AI from zero to hero. And why I say this? Because with this, you can... You can be a student on, on higher education, you can be a student on the school, and you can learn AI with this, but also you can use this in a professional project. Well, basically, this is the developer kit, but this is also a module you can, you can extract, okay? So this can be embedded in uh, industrial devices. So why, yes, well, this one is the developer kit, right? But there are, there are others that, that you can embed. And I will speak later about the, the full Jetson, fam Jetson family, also for, for industrial purposes. So why Jetson Nano is the perfect fit for AI in education? Uh, first, it is small and portable. The dev kit is very small, it's portable. It is an all-one computer. You can use only the Jetson Nano to develop. Uh, I have been doing the development only in the Jetson Nano using YouTube videos, uh, checking tutorials, uh, using Telegram to transfer uh, files. I will speak later about all the things I have done together. 
it is very, very low cost. It depends the price in Europe and, and use is a little bit different, but it is really, really low cost. And it is very, very powerful uh, for its AI task. task. And it is part of the media ecosystem. This is really, really important because you have the latest things on CUDA here directly on the chip. And it is upgradable to fit any project size. So you can start with a small project, but if you need to upgrade to some industrial project or even some space project, you can uh, switch to a bigger member of the Jetson family. And this is a quick, uh, yeah, quick view of the, of the connectors. You have Ethernet, you have USB 2, 3, HDMI. Uh, you have the very, very important 40 pin expansion header that is a GPIO connector. And here are also the, some specifications. For me, the most important ones are these ones. So the Jetson Nano, even having two gigs, it is really, really fast encoding video. It can encode four streams of 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is amazing. And also it can decode two 4K video at 30 uh, FPS, which is yeah, crazy. Even 18 uh, HD videos at the same time. It is really, really amazing for the size. And it is made for AI. This is a quick comparison between Raspberry Pi and the Google Coral. Uh, Raspberry Pi is the number, the, the one that has this small one uh, on the bottom. And for example, in the open pose uh, detection, the Jetson Nano can do it 73 times faster than a Raspberry Pi, which is crazy. And don't, don't uh, be wrong. We love uh, Raspberry Pi and we love Arduino communities the only thing is they are for different things. We are for AI. In, in fact, we are for edge AI. So we are really, really good doing this kind of detections and they are really good on other things. For example, they have a huge community that probably is, is very close to the community we have because we serve uh, out of interest. I'm gonna show you a video with some projects we have with our community. Each of these windows is a project, a different one. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I paused. And here I am going to, to feature a few of them. For example, the, the last one, and this is from a week ago. So this is using uh, 3D pose estimation uh, in a Jetson. It, this, I think this has been done in the Jetson NX, but it works on the Nano at 22 frames per second, which is amazing. This is estimating your pose in 3D, which can be useful maybe, I don't know, for some kind of games or some detection of behavior. Yeah. So this is usually fun stuff is the starter of serious projects, which is really, really good. Uh, let's see another example of fun stuff. So for example, this is the AI activated glow Wolverine Claws by Jay Bratton. He's doing face detection. And when, when he does this gesture, the, the Klaus gesture, then the Klaus moves, uh, move forward. So yeah. It's a fun project, yeah, and a very good use case for, for face detection. Let's see another example. Uh, this, for example, is following uh, the first uh, car that is uh, controlled by a human, but the second car is is just following using AI, uh, to, using the AI to the first car. So yeah, yeah this is cool. And if, if you want to to check. Uh, more community projects, you can go to the website. We have a community page, plenty of projects, and you can spend a lot of time watching uh, fun videos there. And also you can submit your own. So we will speak later about this. Also, this is not only for fun projects. Well, these are also fun projects, but these are more serious projects that can be industrial and even they can be in, in different environments. For example, one is the left one, sizes. They are building something very, very similar to the Mars rover uh, to work in environments where there is no internet. And Rovco is 
building, also a ROP. It's a kind of uh, remote operative vehicle for, for underwater activities. And they are doing some kind of 3D scan or automatically underwater because there are some places where you don't have internet and you need edge AI there. So I'm gonna show you an example of Robco. We have a video. So Rock, the Robco, in case it is not controlled with a cable and doesn't have internet, can find objects in the yeah, in the undersea and surround them to do to make a, a 3D scan all by itself. Uh -huh. This is the Robco example. And I'm gonna show you now the sizes example. So basically, probably we are going to, to return to Mars soon. We have also some rovers there. Uh, but what happened when you need to speak with Mars, you have a delay of eight minutes, which is a lot when you need to control something in real time. So there are also some places in the earth that maybe humans and internet or, or cloud services cannot access. So it's AI, it's amazing for these use cases because you need to uh, create a machine that can think by itself and take some decisions and then inform you maybe later after the decisions have been made. So. Okay, but how difficult is to start from zero with the nano? The answer is zero difficult. I'm gonna show you an example soon. So what can you do with only two gigabytes? As I said to you before, I have been using this all together. I have been coding on Visual Studio, which works. There is an open source version that works on the, on the nano. I have been watching uh, YouTube tutorials in full HD. I have been doing voice recognition at the same time. I have been doing, uh, I have been moving a robotic arm and also I have been transferring me files between computers with Telegram. That in a Jetson Nano, which is amazing and everything at the same time. So let's see an example from zero to hero in five minutes. I'm gonna show you in five minutes how you plug the SD card from scratch, you install Linux and you make a quick uh, detection. A second, yeah, now let's see. Let's start this video. I'm gonna talk over the video. So basically, when you plug the, the nano, you will follow the, the Linux typical installation, like the Ubuntu installation. Yeah, you, you select the keyboard, you select the local, you add the, the name, the password, you select the partition. And then something important is to create a swap file. This is recommended because having two gigabytes of physical memory can deal to some memory issues. So by creating a swap file, we will have more virtual memory and we can execute more tasks at the same time. It will run the, the installation. This of course takes a few minutes, not a lot, maybe 15, 20 minutes or less. It depends on the SD card speed also. So yeah, finally we are in on the desktop. I'm gonna close this. Uh, window and I'm gonna download a quick uh, script I have that uh, mix 10 different commands that I'm gonna show you now in the screens. And those commands are the only ones you need to type to have the Hello AI repository clone. That repository has all the examples to get started with the Jetson Nano. Basically is what I'm doing now is executing all this uh, command, downloading the repo, building the repo and installing it. <clears throat> So yeah, during the installation, it will pop up this. This is uh, to download the AI models. So there are some uh, market by default. I'm gonna use the, the default ones, <coughs> sorry. Uh, all of them are being downloaded now. Yeah, Google Net, ResNet, MobileNet, PethNet. I'm going to use this later. PethNet is to detect pedestrians. Uh, ResNet City Escapes. I'm going to use also in this uh, quick demo City Escapes to detect uh, cars, um, the floor, yeah, the buildings. Uh, it will ask if I want to install PyTorch. I'm not, not going to install it because this is only if I want to train uh, things. For this video, I'm not going to train. I'm going to use only inference. It's building everything. And, and that's it. I'm going to open a folder where we have some video samples. And I'm gonna use one of the videos to, to, to make an example. 
So I'm going to open the pedestrians video. And yeah, you see some people walking with dogs and yeah, saying hi to each other sometimes. Uh, I'm going to, to do the detection, I'm going to run the detectnet.py. It's a Python script over this video. I only need to put Python detectnet and the video. And magically, it's going to start detecting uh, objects, persons, there is a potted plant there. So yeah, uh, but as you see, it's not 100% accurate. It has some issues detecting sometimes people. So what, what can I do? I can go back. Now I'm going to go to the uh, download models script. So I can show you the, the PetNet model we are going to use. Yeah. So as you see, there is the PetNet model here. I should mark it. It is marked already. So I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to click OK and close that. It. And I'm going to now uh, indicate that I want to use the network, the network, PetNet, uh, for the detection. And you will see now uh, how different it is. Yeah, it takes uh, sometimes the first time you, you run a new, new network. But yeah, it is fast. So yeah, now as you see, it, it is much, much uh, better, the detection. Yeah? The less, less false positives and all the persons are, are very, very well detected. So this is uh, the detection. This is the object detection algorithm. But what happens if we want to do a segmentation algorithm? For example, we want to detect what is a building here? What is a car? What is the uh, floor? So we are going to do the same. We are going to execute, in this case, the segnet.py script. And we are going to use the network cityscapes, which is trained to detect uh, buildings, cars, floor, and well, a lot of stuff we are going to see now. So I run the model directly. And the magic is going to happen now. And as you see, uh, it's detecting on gray the buildings, on green the trees, on pink the road, yeah, blue the cars, and uh, yeah, blue and cyan, yeah, and uh, yeah, and another blue <laughs> this guy. So basically, this is a way. Uh, this is how you can create a self-driving car, for example. You can say, okay, if you have pink keep going. You have something like gray or blue, stop, because there is a car or a building, right? So yeah, uh, you have seen how easy it is to create in a few minutes uh, something from scratch. Yeah, and you don't need to know how to develop yet. So yeah, just to modify it. OK, so um, how can we train now a nano to make a pepperoni pizza, right? Because I want to eat my pepperoni pizza. So first step, uh, find Italian pepperoni in Spain, which is not easy. Uh, I have uh, go through a lot of supermarkets and was almost impossible to find pepperoni in Spain because we have a lot of Spanish chorizo. But finally, after a, after a long search, I've, I found it. OK, so let's do let's do the training first. So to train, what we need to do first is collecting samples. So I need to. Uh, move the pepperoni in different ways from one side, the other side. Uh, put another different pepperoni because not all pepperonis are the same. We want to detect all type of pepperonis, not one pepperoni, because uh, we probably will use uh, more uh, pepperonis. <laughs> I, I bought this like a week ago, so I need to replace pepperonis for, uh, in, in it's three days or something because they, they get dry and they, they change the detection. So. Let's say the detection with this quick training. As you see, it's detecting, it's kind of detecting the pepperoni, but it has some difficulties. It is detecting the pepperoni inside the pepperoni. Sometimes it's not detecting very well the pepperoni. So why this is happening? Uh, usually we need to collect a lot of samples. So I train it much more. I started collecting more samples and more and more and more samples. I spent almost an hour <laughs> throwing different pepperonis in different um, rotations, different sides, with different in different parts of the table because of the illumination, it is different. And finally, it worked much better. So this is the the detection, and now it is uh, it has a ninety nine percent of 
of confidence and is detecting all the pepperonis. So yeah, I think we are ready to, to do something with these pepperonis. I'm gonna speak quickly about the commands used. Uh, of course, you don't need to develop nothing to do this. You only need to know how to train, which is running a few commands and say, hey, this is pepperoni, hey, this is another pepperoni. And these are the commands. So basically I'm gonna, well, first I'm gonna open the folder. I'm gonna show you how many samples I have. I have 242 samples, which is really good. And this is the command to train. So basically it's running Python, Python 3, and you run the train SSD Py with some uh, arguments, depending on the options you want for the training. And you run it. We are going to see this in real time. This is not a speed up, okay? So you will see how much it takes to train uh, 242 samples. Uh, now it will see, let's see, yeah, I will see now the loss. So this value should be lower than usually two or something to have a, a really good detection. Now the value is 2.7, 2.4, 2.6, it's going up. That should happen sometimes when you are doing the training, but should lower quickly after that. Now it's three. Now it's 2.1 and now, now it's 2.9, now it's 1.6. So that's much better. So this is the training. Yeah, 1.9. Yeah, I think that's a good training. And after this, I'm gonna go a little bit, I'm gonna advance a little bit the video. What I need to do after training the model, I need to convert it to another format that is the ONNX, ONNX. It's an open, open format to, to store the models, which is compatible with a lot of, of boards and, and brands. So it's exporting the models. And then after I have the, the model export, I only need to run the detectNet script, so saying what models I want to use. So basically that's it. And ready to grab the pepperoni. Let's see if it works. Give me a second. Everything's okay here. Okay, yeah, let's go. So this is the robotic arm. When I detect the pepperoni, I am sending the coordinates of the center of the box and the robotic arm is calibrated to go to those coordinates. It's not perfectly calibrated, but kind of, and works really well. So yeah, and work it. It put the pepperoni on the plate. So let's try this now with a pizza because we are ready to make the pizza. One pepperoni. I need a few more. Let's go for the second pepperoni. Yeah, two pepperonis. I will add a few more, probably four or five. So this is closer to the pizza. So as you see, also it grab it well. This is far away. Well done. And that's it. So the pizza is ready. Let's see the result. Yeah, looks fantastic. <laughs> I have one slice here for later. I will eat it during the Q&A. So start thinking about the questions. And there it is. Okay, give me a second. Yeah. So Jetson Nano, uh, as I said before, it is the perfect fit for education. And if you are passionate about teaching AI, uh, there is something that probably is really interesting for you you can become a Jetson AI ambassador. So we have some kind of perks. There is a kind of summary here. Everything is, is in the website, but, but the thing is we help you to organize events. We help you to teach AI. We also help you learning more AI. So if you are on 
on teaching, if you work in a university, you know a little bit about AI. And if you have played before a little bit with Jetson, uh, let us know because you can become a Jetson AI ambassador. And if you are passionate about learning in instead of teaching AI, you can also become a Jetson AI specialist. And this is open for everyone. Also, if you have some experience with, with AI, if you have some experience, even small experience with Jetson, Jetson, and if you complete a DLI certificate, certificate we have on the website, DLI, by the way, is the Deep Learning Institute. It's an area on the website that you can enter and you can learn for free in some skills created with the Jetson. With that, you can become directly a Jetson AI specialist. So let us know. You can pick me later on Twitter or something, or even in the Q&A, you can ask about this because I think this is really, really uh, interesting. And if you want to start today, there is a website you can go. That is, this one is, uh, is a shortened uh, URL, bit.ly, Jetson, Ita. And uh, yes, yeah, it's Jetson, Ita. I think I'm gonna check it later, but if it doesn't work, let me know, but I think it works. And uh, for any of you that buys today, uh, the Jetson Nano and uh, are in this uh, Maker Fair, are registered in this Maker Fair, uh, I can give you, give you some kind of support after that. So let me know if you buy it and I can help you with um, getting started with the Nano yeah, in when you receive the Nano at, at, at your home. So basically this is all. I'm gonna wait for your Q and A. Uh, I'm gonna check if there is any questions here. Q and A. Open, okay, I'm gonna read it. Uh -huh. But the link for the samples, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna start first with the first one. How should I start learning AI for, how should I start to learn AI from the beginning? What development languages do I need to know? I see all that code, is it really hard? No, it is really easy. Even you don't need to learn how to code if you want to do these samples I have done. But uh, I recommend to you to use Python. Python is really easy to learn and everything is based on Python. Uh, even the samples we have, they are pre-compiled on Z, but also we have the equivalent on Python. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna click, hold on, uh, I've read live. Okay, sorry, I, I'm clicking the, through the through the Q&A. So yeah, learn Python, it is really, really easy. And even you don't, le you don't need to learn Python to, to try the things I have been trying before. So how long did it take to train all the pepperoni to get to 95%? I think almost an hour and a half, maybe. I was more optimistic first, but when I did the first tries, yeah, I, I knew I needed to train it more. And um, uh, okay. And uh, another thing, yeah, I was clicking through the Q&A. And um, this can be avoided if we use some kind of simulation. That's, that is why NVIDIA has Isaac. Isaac is a suite where you can simulate things. So probably in the future I can do, I can maybe next year, I can give a talk simulating the pepperoni on Isaac and then, then the robot uh, can be trained by itself. So I don't need to train it with the uh, different samples, these different real samples. Okay, have a Raspberry Pi and a Pi camera. Can I use the same camera with a Jetson Nano? Yes, in fact, I forgot to, to speak about this. That is why we are really, really friendly with the Raspberry Pi community. On some Jetson Nano kits, we include the, the Pi camera and we do the, the detection with the Pi camera, which is compatible directly with, um, with this connector, with, with the camera connector that we have here. Okay, answer. <clears throat> Good with the pizza, that's funny, thank you. <laughs> Where can I get training on NVIDIA AI and CUDA? So yes, try to find, um, you can go to Google directly and, and find DLI NVIDIA Jetson, for example, or NVIDIA CUDA. We have some courses on, on both, which are free. And yeah, take a look there because you will find probably some interesting stuff. And everything is really easy with a lot of videos and samples. And if you do the courses, you can become an NVIDIA specialist on CUDA if you are on CUDA and on Jetson if you are on Jetson. How can Arrow help with a project idea to help bring it to market? I think this question is more for Arrow 
but yes, I think you can contact them. Uh, um, maybe Aldo wants to re reply. Uh, but yeah, I think you can contact them through the website. Yeah, Aldo? Yes, yes. We have a FIE, FIE dedicated on NVIDIA is a Plauto. Plauto for you taking care of support our customer on, uh, on NVIDIA product, of, of industrial product. In video, Jetson Nano and uh, Nix uh, and uh, Savi. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna click answer. What is the place to see the project videos you saw it earlier? So, the project videos, project videos, I think is the community page. I'm gonna type the answer because I think I have it here. Do, 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 do. Give me a second. Jetson community. Yeah, here it is. I'm gonna type you the. Yeah, the answer okay great presentation thank you is the nano able to take video from a rtis sp stream from a camera over ethernet or wi-fi yes for sure so yet so nano is a computer so you can do that you need to develop it probably but yeah you can you can receive a video for from an rtsp stream probably even python has some libraries for rtsp i haven't checked it but yes you can do that for sure what is the cost of Jetson Nano? I think in Europe now it's, it is around 63 euros, something like that. Try to find the right distribution channel because sometimes uh, prices are, depends on the, on the distributor. So try to spend some time trying to find the best price for you. Okay, who should I talk to at Arrow Italy to find more about Jetson and NVIDIA? Yeah, I think Aldo uh, can reply this one, but uh, yeah, I think in the, I don't, well, I don't know if Aldo wants yes, to say it. Yes, it's possible, um, it's possible uh, a bit, uh, and uh, it's possible buy if uh, it's not the, the company, it's possible buy on Aro.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, you are a company, it's possible buy directly from uh, our seven offices in Italy, in Milan, Turin, uh, Florence, Padua, Bologna, Rome, and Senegal. Yeah. yeah, much better if you buy from Aro than... Amazon and these places where the price moves a lot. So, yeah. Can you type the link to the Bitly again here? Yes. Uh, I'm going to type it and I'm going to check it works. But it, I think it's like this. I'm going to check if it works. I think so. Yeah, Th there it is. Okay. Are there any cases or accessories for the Nano? Yes, you can uh, you can find them in Thingiverse, which are open. Uh, so are not official, but uh, I, I didn't wrote it. But there is a web page called Thingiverse where you can 3D print uh, stuff for the Nano. No, nothing official as far as I know, but maybe there is something. So, okay, what is the description of your pepperoni training? Um, I'm going to write an article soon about all the training uh, on the pepperoni thing. So uh, keep uh, keep an eye around because I will post it maybe after Christmas. So with all the details and all the code, so you can even run it if you, you have a, a small robot or at least doing the detection. Uh, you have, oh, yeah, my video has gone green. That happened before, yeah. I don't know why, yeah, but I have that happened be, to me before. No, now it's okay. Now no, it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, okay. it's because we live in Matrix, so don't worry about that. It's okay. <laughs> Rita, thanks for sharing. Are you making another projects? Uh, yes, we are doing something related with music that probably will be published on January. So let's see. Yes. Okay, thank you all for your questions and and everything. Uh, if you have any other question, ping me on Twitter. Uh, yeah, how can I contact you? I usually use Twitter, so oops. Um, oh, I say yeah, I, I didn't type it, but uh, you can go on Twitter. My name is uh, Sierra Rans. I think I can do it quickly here. Uh, yeah, this is the URL. I'm gonna go to the presentation first page here. Oh, there's no, yeah, there it is. My Twitter is uh, in the bottom left. It's Asiera Rans, and you can contact me there. Also, you can follow NVIDIA Embedded on Twitter, which they will keep posting uh, the interesting projects and stuff for you. 
Okay. So thank you everyone uh, and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you to all. Bye bye. <laughs>